It, it's a rowdy bunch today. It's a rowdy bunch. Okay, hi everybody. I think it's time to get going. I'm Rich Baranek uh, from Rice University. It's, it, this must be what it's like when you die and go to heaven, and everybody, you know everybody. It's just amazing. I've never seen so many friends all in one place, so we're going to have a great time. Uh, today we celebrate uh, a birthday, uh, the 50th of the Rice program in Digital Signal Processing, DSP. And I like to kid uh, Sidney Burris that I was born the year that he came to Rice as an assistant professor. Uh, and over these past 50 years, uh, DSP's evolved from an obscure research discipline into a, a juggernaut, an essential technology of our, of our everyday life. Uh, from CD players, cell phones, anybody even have a CD player anymore, right? <laughs> Uh, Siri, MRI, CAT scans, seismic data analyzers, the impacts are all, just all over the place. Uh, and beyond this, uh, many of these technologies were developed by people in this audience, which is just so, uh, so exciting. So with this in mind, uh, this day is for you, right? It's a day to celebrate, to reconnect, uh, and recharge, and think about the, the past the present and the future of the Rice uh, DSP program. So there should be lots of time for people to listen, but not just listen and ponder, but also interact and talk and argue and uh, get, get your point across. Uh, we've organized the day into several chapters that take us from this past through the present and the future. Uh, and I think it's important to think about the future because I don't know if you've noticed, but there you know, there's a war going on. Borders are being breached. Walls are going up. Uh, divisions in our community. Uh, but I promise you that we are going to have a path forward at the end of this meeting, and we are, we are truly going to make DSP great again. <laughs> so, and this, it's going to be great. It's going to be great, and I hope we have your vote for the future of DSP. Jokes aside, uh, as a native Canadian, uh, there has to be an apologetic portion of my remarks. Uh, I've cleared all of the following with Owen Kelly, or other Canadian, uh, and I apologize in advance to anyone who feels slighted for not being, uh, uh, being invited to the podium during the formal program. We selected the speakers by lottery. Uh, we weren't sure, exactly sure how to do it. Sydney suggested a deterministic model on models rule for the speakers. I think there was a bug, and it just came out alphabetical, and Benham Ajang was presenting every single talk. So that doesn't <laughs> gonna work. Don Johnson quit in disgust when he looked at the statistics and they weren't non-Gaussian enough. So in the end, we had to use deep learning, and we didn't have enough training data, so uh, we could be prone to adversarial attacks. But there's gonna be just a lot of time we're gonna have after most of the sessions, there are mics set up uh, for people to make comments, ask questions, and, and really make this a, a, a discussion. I think the key part of this day is that this is a, an informal meeting. Uh, we're going to be scrambling around uh, with talks and things up at the front. That will just give people more time to, to chit-chat back and forth. Uh, we're going to try and keep the breaks long uh, and uh, finish by 5 o'clock so that we can have... Uh, some drinks and, and, and a dinner, and then he all head over to, to Valhalla. I'd like to recognize several dignitaries in the audience. We have uh, some Rice trustees, past and present. Just like to, to call out Bill and Stephanie Sick. Uh, uh, Bill's a former trustee and also a former VP of TI, and you're going to hear more about him later. So we, thanks to Bill and Stephanie for coming. We also have a former and current NSF program managers, John Cousins, Tony Q are here. You're going to hear from John later. And, and a great many folks from outside the immediate Rice circle, uh, like immediate alum circle, too many to, to actually mention. So, uh, but you're going, to, you're going to find these people during, during the breaks. But thanks so much for, for all of our, our, our friends uh, for coming. I'd like to thank a few of our sponsors, the Rice Electrical and Computer Engineering Department, uh, the Dean of Engineering's office, the President and Provost through the Rice Creative Ventures Fund, and a mysterious anonymous corporate, uh, corporate donor. Also thanks to Becca Willett. Is Becca here? Where is Becca? 
Thanks for the art program. Uh, as part of the art program, uh, thanking her, we actually elevated her in the family trees as, as a Rice faculty member. So maybe that's a dream for the future. I don't know. OK. Also, uh, thanks to the ECE uh, administrative team, who were really the people who carried this off, uh, Sarah Callan, Skylar Wachoff, and Aki Shimada. Let's give them a round of applause. We'll be meeting them uh, later. OK, a final note before we get started. Uh, we we're overjoyed with the number of photos that people have been uploading to the Google site. We'd like to keep that going. So take lots of, everybody has a phone on their camera. Take a lot of pictures today. Take videos. Uh, and then you can upload those. You, there's, if you go to the DSP website, you can, there's an email address that you can just upload any photos or videos. Or if you like to do Facebook, you can just go through this link to the ECE Facebook page and there's an easy way to upload uh, your photos and videos. Okay, so please do this. So without further ado, uh, oh wait a minute, we're going to preserve all these by the way. So we're going to share all the photos and videos with you. There will also be YouTube videos of the program for people to, uh, who, were, who weren't able to participate for them to see. And then we're going to put everything in a time capsule for DSP 100 uh, that we're hoping most of us will be around for in 2069. Okay, so with, with uh, uh, that in mind, I'd like to hand over to uh, Edward Knightley, who's the Schaefer Lindsay Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering and the Chair of the ECE Department. So let's hear it for Edward. I'm the Schaefer Lindsay Professor of Electrical Engineering and, uh, and also the ECE Department Chair. And I would like to start also with a welcome to you all. Great to see some of our alumni back and all the friends of, of DSP. And thank you all for making the trip and also our, our uh, local uh, faculty and, and students as well. Uh, so to get back with the theme of 50 years of DSP, let's go back to the general announcements of 1969. And the first thing I want you to see is the electrical engineering faculty. Now notice there's no C yet in electrical and computer engineering. So we hadn't yet discovered the importance of computing in electrical engineering. Uh, but there is uh, Sid Burris is on there as an assistant professor. And then if I understand, his first office was in uh, Abercrombie. Is that, is that right? Okay. And so you can see how much the campus has changed. <laughs> um, Abercrombie is still there, but of course the building where we're here, BRC, is not even yet uh, on this map. And I couldn't get a 1969 picture, but I would like to point out a couple of the legends, uh, uh, Don and Sid, and, and you're going to hear so much more about the legends. Um, who, who are, are legends not only in research, but also teaching, mentorship, and, and leadership. And I, I, just a, an anecdote from recently, we've been doing a data science uh, hiring search, and one of the faculty members came in, or the, the, the search candidates came in to uh, meet with me, and I asked how his day was going. His eyes were just wide open, he said, I just met Sid Burris. <laughs> And I said, he was just so excited to have met Sid Burris. I said, that's awesome. He's, he's truly a legend. And then when the students, the student, uh, as department chair, the students, I'm always asking them, what do you like about ECE? What do you dislike? And they always tell me how awesome the intro courses are with Don and with Sid. And they say, uh, what awesome teachers they are. And I tell them, you are learning from the true legends. You, you, th this is... This is Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi teaching you about uh, signal processing. And then I also tell them that they've, the, you're also getting it from Luke Skywalker. And, um, and this is where the mentorship comes because it's not just about, uh, about what was done in the past, but it's also about handing the torch to the next generation and also teaching research uh, leadership in the community. And I would keep going more generations, but I don't know enough Star Wars characters to keep that metaphor going. I apologize. Um, but, I, but DSP has also very profoundly impacted ECE as a department. And through, uh, through research, education, scholarship. And so I just wanted to tell you, just give you one data point about what it's done 
for ECE overall and how it's impacted. And so I'll give you, I'll give you data on the next uh, one, one chart. I'll give you some data to show about the impact. So Academic Analytics is a company that does uh, data analysis of all departments across the US and all disciplines too. It's not just about electrical engineering. And universities around the world subscribe to them to try to benchmark. How are we doing compared to others? And ECE is awesome because on all of these metrics, we end up the number one uh, department. And, uh, and I want to just give you a couple reasons why. That if you look at the things over here in pink, this is a radar showing the, the center is the 50th percentile. So that's, that's uh, an average. And then if you get all the way to the outside, then you're number one. You're the 100th percentile. And so I don't know if you can see this outer, uh, this outer ring from where you're sitting, but the citations are at the 100th percentile. Um, the uh, federal funding in green is on the 100th percentile. The awards are on the 100th percentile. And interestingly, the ones that are are conference and journal publications, and I think it's so interesting because our department is is um, the, the 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 nano people don't actually publish in conferences, and then the computing people don't publish in journals. So we kind of get squeezed in a little bit there. But otherwise, I'm really proud of of the role DSP has played in in excellence, and and all through example and through uh, through showing how it can be done with the leaders. So for my last slide, I want to say a little bit about the next 50. And I'll, I'll give you an anecdote here about how DSP uh, as a foundation for so many different areas. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a uh, Bryce lecture at, at Rice. And that's named after Gene Bryce alumni from 1937. And our lecturer was Andrea Goldsmith. And she's in the wireless area and has done some startups and fantastic work. And um, she was telling us how she was resisting machine learning. She didn't want to be on a bandwagon. So she was trying very hard not to use it in her research. And then she got to a problem where she had no choice. And she applied it successfully. And she just said as an off-the-cuff remark that, you know, this is really just DSP. And, and she equated machine learning and DSP and said that was the foundation of signal analysis applied to uh, different domains and then pushing forward to artificial intelligence, letting us process the signals. Uh, and it, the Internet of Intelligent Things is, is the last one I want to mention because it's really the signals that get generated by the physical world and then making inferences from them that DSP has been so amazing with. So I look forward to the next 50 and the contributions this community makes and the contributions you all make to other communities too so we can collaborate and work together on larger problems. So with that, I thank you. And I would also like to introduce our next speaker, David Lebron, who is the seventh president of Rice University. So David, all yours. So I have a very limited number of tasks this morning. The first is really to welcome all of you on behalf of the university, and I especially want to welcome those of our alumni who are returning. I think one of the most important measures of the success um, and importance of a program is what has been the influence of the graduates of the program. And it's, it's clear that out of our, our DSP efforts have come an influence that extends far beyond Rice University. In fact, I think it's fair to say that that, that influence today is global. So I want to thank all of you for, for being here. Um, so my, my second task was to say something, and I don't know if I can do any better than the preceding speakers about how important digital signal processing has been to, to, to Rice. So I think of this in two different ways. One is along a historical timeline, which really reaches, in some ways it reaches back to 1891 when William Marsh Rice first decided to, that he would put his assets into a trust to create the Rice Institute. And, and he made one really smart decision, which was, not to be involved in any way whatsoever with how this institute would be defined. And so nothing was really begun according to his wishes until, until after he died or was murdered uh, in 1900. That's a whole different story. He, he, he was 
murdered by a lawyer in New York City. And so when they came after me, I was a little bit worried about the whole, <laughs> the whole thing. Um, but I, I don't, but so Edgar O'Dell Lovett and, came and he negotiated a deal, which I was, I tried to repeat, but was unable to, which is that before actually starting here, he would travel around the world and visit the great universities all over the world over a nine month trip. I suggested to the trustees it was time to do that again. Um, they said they didn't think so. And so uh, the reason I think that's important is because it's important to understand what the founding ambitions of this university were. They were to become clearly, there's really just no historic doubt about this, one of the great universities of the world, keeping in mind that at the time Houston was a city with a population around 70,000 people. So I'm going to fast forward, but over time, that vision got derailed for a number of reasons. One of them certainly was the Great Depression, followed by World War II, followed by one of the very fundamental mistakes in the history of the university, which was not to take any federal money, probably related to its racial discrimination for the first 50 years of the university. So that left us behind many universities that were older, and indeed some that were, were newer. So Pitzer came as president uh, from Berkeley in 1960, I think it was. And what he brought with him was this new vision for the university with the support of the board, although you might very well argue it was a return not to, the new vi to a new vision, but really the old vision, the founding vision of the university, which had kind of gotten lost as Rice had become much more of a sort of regional liberal arts college in some ways. And so he started, with the support of the board, investing in this vision of Rice being a research university. Now, you can't just decide, you know, we're going to be a, we're, we're now a research university. It requires various things. But one of the things it really is going to require is success. And this is where, so I tend to think of the world, and I apologize, this is not terribly digital in a way, but I think of the world generally in terms of Venn diagrams. And the question in my Venn diagram here is, what, what is the intersection between things that are important in the history of Rice and things that are important to the world? And that is exactly where digital signal processing sits for our university. In the 1960s, the thing that so clearly put us not on just a trajectory, but a successful trajectory where people could say, Rice is a research university that is contributing something vitally important to our world. That was the step in some ways that was necessary for our university to get us here. And then I think as you heard from Rich, the impact in the world. So I, I was trying to think, I, I, I went on you know, Google this morning, one of you said to me was, you found, this morning you found something uh, on Google and therefore it was true. Please don't believe that. <laughs> uh, but I tried to Google a useful definition from a lawyer's perspective of digital signal processing. And I couldn't find one, because apparently all the definitions out there are written by electrical and computer engineers. <laughs> uh, and so I came up with one and I ran it by uh, a Sid Burris this morning. And he looked a little skeptical, but he kind of gave me his blessing at the end of the day as a definition that maybe was acceptable to, to, to lawyers and other lower life forms. Um, and the definition that I came up with after reading these more technical ones, it is the bridge between our computational ability and the real world. And as such, it has affected every aspect of our lives today because every aspect of our lives really has benefited from this ability to bring computation together with our sensory world, with our acting world, with everything that we as humans do now benefits from that computational ability. That 
it's hard to think of things much more important in improving our lives and our ability to transform the world for good. But the point I really wanted to emphasize was for Rice, this is in some sense what launched us into this renewed vision for the university and of course very much lies at the core of our vision today. Now I was given a kind of um, third task here and I'm just going to quote from Rich Baranek's memo to, to me. <laughs> Where you see signal processing, parentheses, and ECE in the broader data science slash AI initiatives, end parentheses, <laughs> going in the next 50 years under your leadership as president. <laughs> now, I don't know whether this was just a defective compression algorithm or, 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 or something. Um, I have no intention of being here the next 50 years um, <laughs> as president. But I, what, I, what I will say is I think it's important for a university to, to do several different things. One is to do new things, and the other is to build on its strengths. And I don't know any area that embodies better the potential for both of those things together. DSP has become, and really not only are there few things like this at Rice, I think there are few things like this at any university where you've had a success of this duration, which is why celebrating this and recognizing folks like Sid Burroughs and Don Johnson, that is vitally important for us because it's important to celebrate our successes. But I don't know anything where we have been able to build things with that sustained time and yet are on the verge of using that to do incredibly new things in neuroengineering and in artificial intelligence and in, in, in medicine, in energy, uh, really across the spectrum of the things that challenge our world today. So I just want to conclude by thanking all of you for participating in this celebration. We, as an entire university, join in on that. And frankly, not that I'm authorized to speak on behalf of the human species, uh, but I think we all owe a great thanks to what was in some ways really fueled here at Rice in digital signal processing and has transformed our ability to improve our world. So thank you all very much for being here. Thank you, David. Thank you. Uh, excellent. So our next uh, and final speaker of the introductory session is uh, Ahmed Tufik, who is the Cockrell Family Chair uh, and Chair of the ECE Department at UT Austin and, importantly for today, President-elect of the IEEE Signal Processing Society. So he's here to make a few welcome remarks. Let's give it up for Ahmed. So I'd like to add my uh, welcome to all of you on behalf of the IEEE Signal Processing so Society. It's actually a great honor for me uh, to be here today. And it's a great honor because in my mind, RISE has had a huge impact on signal processing, not just digital signal processing, way beyond the size of its faculty at any point in time. And that starts back in the 60s. Uh, so if I look at things like fast Fourier transforms, uh, filter design, later on uh, wavelets, more recently compressed sensing, a lot of tremendous contributions that have defined the field and continue to define the field. And undoubtedly, uh, this is due to the fact that RISE has had giants on its faculty. So again, folks like uh, Sid, uh, Tom, uh, Don, and more recently, uh, people like Rich, uh, Benham, Mike, uh, Joe, and others. And so they have contributed to advancing the field, having a deep impact on all of us, the way we live. But they've also, and that's extremely important, formed the next generation of giants. And if I look at this room in particular, and others who didn't make it today, 
There are some big names, again, who have had a huge impact on the technology, on our lives, and the next generations. And if that family, that extended family, uh, is, has created the leaders in academia and uh, in industry, but has had also a tremendous impact on the professional formations of others. So I have, if I had more time, uh, I would give you a number of anecdotes on how uh, my interactions with Don, who was the first one to introduce me in some sense to the IEEE Signal Processing Society when he was running the uh, DSP uh, Technical Committee, uh, but also interactions uh, with uh, Sid and the next generation. Uh, so Jim, I was very happy to see Jim McLennan uh, today, uh, more recently Alex Acero within the IEEE, and many, many others on my own uh, professional development. And a few weeks ago, as a society, uh, we had a long-range planning meeting. And this was looking at where we're going. We were looking at sort of new business models for the society, how we can expand our uh, reach and uh, serving uh, humanity at large. And one of the points that came up during the discussion uh, was what kind of a role the IEEE and the Signal Processing Society should have in the continuing education or in general education beyond what academia uh, does. And I reminded everyone of a pioneering effort that came out of, uh, from Rice. Uh, Rich played a big role in this, so did Sid, uh, the Connections Program. And I guess you know, there may be an opportunity to revive a lot of the lessons uh, that we have learned uh, from, from uh, this particular program. Now, of course, Rice has also played a huge role within the IEEE, and in particular, the IEEE Signal Processing Society. So Sid was uh, a member of the Board of Governors and probably lots of other positions. Don was a past president of the IEEE Signal Processing Society. And Rich, in his instructions to me, uh, challenged me uh, to present a list of all of the winners of all of the IEEE Signal Processing Awards, the Technical Awards, uh, you know, the Society Award, the Technical Achievement Award, Meritorious uh, Award, and paper awards uh, in less than one minute. And I guess, Rich, I couldn't do that. <laughs> so, um, so again, I mean, RISE has had a huge impact on, on all of us and, and will continue to have a huge impact on all of us. So I guess enjoy the rest of the day. We're going to reflect on the past and the present. Uh, we're going to uh, look at a peek uh, into the future. I'm not sure I'm going to be around uh, to see the next 50 years of contributions from Rice, but uh, for however long uh, I'm going to be around, I will sure enjoy that. So thanks, Rich, and enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>